Tuesday, May 27th, is a deeply emotional day for SpaceX and its global fan base. Flight 9 marks the third launch of Starship's Block 2 hardware. Unlike the last two attempts, which both ended in explosions around eight minutes after liftoff, this time the spacecraft successfully ignited all its engines following stage separation. It's a major leap forward for a company standing right at the edge of rolling out the next version of its mammoth rocket. But what followed was a mix of triumph and heartbreak. The first stage Super Heavy booster blew up just before its intended splashdown, while the upper stage developed fuel leaks that sent it spinning uncontrollably ahead of its planned re-entry into Earth's atmosphere. SpaceX later confirmed that Starship disintegrated during re-entry, even though it was still on course to land in the Indian Ocean. Now the spotlight is on SpaceX's chief engineer, Elon Musk. Fans didn't have to wait long, just hours after the flight, Musk took to X and dropped some major revelations about Flight 9. Here's the big headline. The Starship upper stage made it to its scheduled engine cutoff. That's a massive improvement over the last flight. If you've been following along, you know SpaceX has been working hard to nail these milestones. And this is a huge step forward. In addition, he also celebrates the first successful reflight of a super heavy booster. A critical step toward reusable rocket technology for cost-effective space travel. Now, for those who might be new here, Starship is SpaceX's fully reusable spacecraft designed to take humans to Mars, the Moon, and beyond. It's paired with the Super Heavy booster, and together, they're the most powerful launch vehicle ever built, capable of carrying up to 150 metric tons in its reusable configuration. That's insane. But let's break down what Elon said in the first post, because there's a lot to unpack. First up, Elon says, Starship made it to the scheduled ship engine cutoff. So big improvement over last flight. Okay, let's talk about why this matters. The scheduled engine cutoff means the Raptor engines, those beasts that power Starship, shut down exactly when they were supposed to during the flight. This is a critical step to ensure the spacecraft can reach orbit, coast, and eventually re-enter safely. If you remember Flight 7 back in January 2025, there was a propellant leak that caused an explosion, much earlier than Flight 9. So getting to this cutoff point is a huge win. And here's another piece of awesome news. No significant loss of heat shield tiles during ascent. Guys, this is huge. If you've been following Starship's development, you know the heat shield has been a major challenge. These hexagonal tiles, thousands of them, are what protect Starship from burning up during re-entry. Back in Flight 2, there were reports of tiles falling off during the Starship's ascent. So, seeing no significant tile loss during ascent in Flight 9. That's a big sign. SpaceX is getting a handle on this. But it wasn't all smooth sailing. Elon also mentioned that leaks caused a loss of main tank pressure during the coast and re-entry phase. This is a bit of a deja vu moment. If you look back at the January 2025 Flight 7 explosion, SpaceX traced the failure to an oxygen and fuel leak in the cavity above the ship's engine firewall. It built up too much pressure and, boom, no more Starship. This time it sounds like a similar issue, but they made it further in the flight, which means they've got a ton of good data to work with. Elon even said, lot of good data to review, and if there's one thing SpaceX is amazing at, it's learning from every single test. So, what's going on with these leaks? Starship's Raptor engines use liquid methane and liquid oxygen. Super cold, high-pressure stuff. Managing those cryogenics in a system this big is tough. Elon said they'd add fire suppression and increase the vent area to tackle this. Looks like they're still working on sealing those gaps and making sure pressure doesn't build up where it shouldn't. But honestly, this is why they test. SpaceX has always taken the guided missile approach, constantly course correcting as they go, just like Elon mentioned in a 2021 interview with Everyday Astronaut. It's a rapidly changing situation. You think of it like a guided missile, like a guided missile is going in the wrong direction at any given point in time, <laughs> but it, it course corrects. Yep. Uh, you don't want to be the, a super precise cannonball. 
when you don't even know where the target is. I love that analogy. It really sums up SpaceX's philosophy. Test, learn, iterate, and keep pushing toward the ultimate goal, a city on Mars. And speaking of pushing forward, let's talk about the most exciting part of this update. Elon announced that the launch cadence for the next three flights will be faster, one every three to four weeks. That's insane. SpaceX is basically saying, we're not slowing down. They've already applied for permission to launch Starship up to 25 times in 2025 from their Starbase facility in South Texas. This rapid cadence is exactly what SpaceX needs to iron out these issues and get Starship ready for orbital refueling, lunar missions, and eventually, Mars. Now the X community is buzzing about this update. One replied, all eyes now turn to Starship Flight 10. Congratulations to you and the entire SpaceX team for pushing the boundaries of what's possible and making history with every launch. And I totally agree, SpaceX is building humanity's future among the stars. Another user even asked if Elon is still doing his making life multiplanetary talk. I hope so, because that's the dream that keeps us all hooked, right? Okay, I have to show you this hilarious meme. Meet Raylene, the woman who will beat Elon Musk to Mars without a rocket. It's a picture of someone pointing at a propane tank exchange, like they're ready to launch it to Mars. Oh my gosh, the X community never fails to make me laugh. But seriously, Raylene, if you've got a better way to get to Mars, I'm all ears. All jokes aside, this update really shows how SpaceX is moving at an incredible pace. They're solving problems like the heat shield tiles, tackling these pesky leaks, and ramping up their launch cadence, all while keeping their eyes on the prize, Mars. If you look at SpaceX's website, their mission has always been clear, enable people to live on other planets. Starship is the key to that. With its ability to refuel in orbit, and even use Mars' natural resources like water and carbon dioxide to refuel on the surface. That's the kind of forward-thinking innovation that gets me so excited about space exploration. So what's next? Flight 10 is on the horizon, and with launches every three to four weeks, we're going to have a lot more to talk about soon. Will they solve the leak issue? Will the heat shield hold up during re-entry? And when will we see that first orbital refueling test? I can't wait to find out. Let me know what you think in the comments. Are you as pumped as I am for Starship's future? If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and ring the bell so you don't miss our next update. Until then, keep looking up, and let's dream of a future on Mars together. SpaceX's Mars plans are a cornerstone of the company's mission to make humanity a multi-planetary species. So far, they've been making significant strides toward that goal. So, let's break it down. SpaceX, founded by Elon Musk in 2002, aims to enable human life on Mars through the development of the Starship spacecraft and Super Heavy Booster, a fully reusable transportation system. The ultimate goal is to build a self-sustaining colony on Mars ensuring the long-term survival of humanity by making us multi-planetary. SpaceX plans to send a million people to Mars using 1,000 starships launched during Mars launch windows, which occur roughly every 26 months. Transit times are estimated at 80 to 150 days, averaging 115 days for the synodic periods between 2024 and 2041. SpaceX's Mars strategy focuses on several critical components. First of all, Starship and Super Heavy system. Starship, paired with the Super Heavy booster, is designed for full reusability, a game changer for reducing costs. The system can carry up to 150 metric tons in its reusable configuration and is capable of on-orbit refueling, a necessity for Mars missions. On-orbit refueling involves tanker versions of Starship without windows that refill the main spacecraft in low Earth orbit before it departs for Mars. This allows Starship to transport up to 100 tons of cargo to Mars. The next one is in situ resource utilization, ISRU. A key part of SpaceX's plan is producing fuel on Mars using the planet's resources. 
Mars has an atmosphere of primarily carbon dioxide, with some nitrogen and argon, and abundant water ice in its soil. SpaceX plans to use these to produce methane and oxygen for return trips and long-term habitation. The process involves extracting water from the Martian soil, splitting it into hydrogen and oxygen, and combining the hydrogen with carbon dioxide from the atmosphere to create methane via the Sabatier reaction. This fuel can power Starship for the return journey, reducing the need to carry all propellant from Earth. SpaceX plans to send five uncrewed Starships to Mars within two years to test landing procedures, life support systems, and ISRU technologies. These missions will also deliver cargo to store vital resources like methane and oxygen, setting the stage for human arrivals. According to Elon Musk, these missions will focus on testing whether starships can land intact on Mars. If successful, crewed missions could begin within four years, potentially by 2029, though Musk has mentioned earlier timelines like 2022 that didn't materialize. This is followed by crewed missions and colonization. The goal is to grow a Mars settlement from an initial outpost to a self-sustaining colony of up to a million people. SpaceX plans to send small fleets of starships during each Mars launch window, funded through public-private partnerships. Musk has long stated his personal goal of enabling human exploration and settlement of Mars. The company aims to begin crewed flights no earlier than 2029, as said, with the long-term vision of a self-sufficient colony that ensures humanity's survival by becoming multiplanetary. SpaceX sees lunar missions as a stepping stone to Mars. The Artemis program offers opportunities for SpaceX to collaborate with NASA on lunar landings, testing technologies like ISRU and life support that will be crucial for Mars. The Artemis program is a series of ongoing lunar missions run by NASA. One Artemis mission has already been completed. In late 2022, Artemis 1, an uncrewed test flight, orbited and flew beyond the moon. According to the initial plan, the next missions include Artemis 2 will be a crewed flight beyond the moon, which will take humans the farthest they've ever been in space. Artemis 3 will be the first crewed moon landing mission since Apollo 17 in 1972. NASA aims to land the first female astronaut and first astronaut of color on the lunar surface. They will spend a week on the moon performing scientific studies before returning to Earth. Artemis 4 will deliver a core part of a new lunar space station, named Gateway, into orbit around the moon and land another two astronauts on the moon's surface. Artemis 5 will add another important module to the Gateway and involve a third crewed lunar landing to undertake further surface science.